today I'm going to do a live session where I would be creating a live Django project which would have a data science part as well and I would try to cover as many things which are required to create a web application using Django. So let's see what are the topics we will cover and what are the steps we will take during this particular project. So my idea was to create a Django application not to just host a blog or a, or a website or something but, but the idea was to have a web application which does something related to machine learning. So what I have created an application was the open source data MPC which is available right to do the self learning. So I have created an application where the target is to predict the mileage of the car based on the given information and that all would be through Django and over the period of time you would realize Django is how much convenient on creating such web application and also to create a quick POCs based on your data science project or any other requirement which you have where you would be using Python for doing that POC. So the steps which we would take for this particular exercise would be we would have the training data and then we will train a model we will create a regression based model then we have to create a form where the user would give the values of a particular car's detail and in return the backend or the system would re reply or respond with the mileage per gallon of that particular car based on the given historical data we would train a model and that model would finally help us on getting the prediction for the new given data then we would also have some interaction with the database where to just for the sake of showing how to get it done i am using a mongodb database where whatever user would give as an input we will score it through our backend and once the user says yeah he is fine with it and he is satisfied with the answer then he he wants to update the database with the this new record where he is confident the answer was correct and then we will store it as our next set of training data. Then we will also have the form to update the same data to the backend and then we will also have to see how to deploy a model or how to integrate a scikit-learn based model in Django. In throughout this all steps we would learn how to have a HTML files in Django. We will also learn how to serve CSS file or static files in Django, database connection with Django, templates in Django we would come to know how, how this template text would be helpful during creating the HTML or creating a dynamic website or serving a model as a web application which is really good part of the Django and then how to create forms in Django overall. So this is the overall learning and the target which we are uh, trying to achieve throughout this particular video. So let's start with it. Let's have a quick demo how our application would look like. So this is a dummy application which I have created so it has so this is the server Django server where it is running so server running and this is the console where my database is running and this is the application then so I have filled the form so the user would first fill the form and then it will say submit and then from the system backend we would give the response the mile per gallon of the car would be near around 17 based on our model then do you want to update this to our database? So now we will say submit and this particular new information would get updated to our database. Now once it has updated and I say view of database, so my numbers have, so my numbers increased. So earlier it was 93, now it's 94. I go back and I just change something else. I update and now my values are changed and let's say I want to submit it to database. I update it and my database is updated. So this is the whole application, a very simple demoable ap application which has a model in the backend and we are serving it. So let's start with the project. To start with the project, we have to go through the few steps like creating the web application and uh, to start with the project, we have to go through some steps like first is creating a model. So for creating a model, I have prepared a very short notebook. I have prepared a short notebook where we can just simply have a look. So these are the models which I am importing. Just to be sure, I am using our pre-processing functions to clean the data as I, I know that there is some missing value in the data 
and we want to pre-process such data in our model in our web application as well so if there is some missing value coming through our uh, web page or the user is not giving that information we should be able to process it so for now horsepower has the six missing values and for that we would be using and for that we would be using missing value imputation so i have to just edit it into the my data mapper horsepower preprocessing dot imputer and it will take care of it so once i have defined my data mapper i will create my pipeline which would just scale all the other variables and for the horsepower it would do the imputation and for the origin as it's a categorical value for as we know i would just do the one hot encoding of it and i prepare this model i will choose my x and y variables i'll simply fit the pipeline i'm not doing any cross validation or anything just for the quick and i just tested it now i have to save the model so this is how i saved my model now i can just check once if i load it so this is this is good enough now now i have to so this is my new trained model which i would be using during my development of the application so this part is done now the training data run regression model we created now let's come back to the creating a web application so this is good enough for now for that we would start with a new project so let's just start from here cmd activate python 36 and i would do django admin start project and i would say mpg so here mpg web app is created now i would just go into inside the folder mpg web app i would say django admin start app and i would just say it and now this is my application inside my project now i have to start editing it so i would come to visual studio so here now as we are inside the django project we will start with editing the few simple steps and then we would be all good to start with our application so now okay i have to close my application first whichever is running so i close it now the second part is my database is still running so which is good and here i have to say python manage.py run server and i just reload and we are in the very first stage now from here onwards we would start editing it so the first thing is we have to create a index page or let's say the first start place of our django so for that we have the first page our application and in the views we would just simply say def index we have to return something so first thing is we have to return a http response so for that we have to get from django dot http so this what this would do it would help us on creating a response which a browser would be able to understand so this is we are doing just a dummy but we don't actually need it for a web page for web page we have to use something else and that's called render so just to start with let me first create it once now from here so this is the index but from the urls django understands everything so from here we have to import from so i would be importing django.com.urls import url so with this help of url what i would be able to do is will be able to as define what we are expecting from the browser and how to deal with it so default page or the index page or nothing is defined as power sign and the dollar and i have to import the views that is from my app first page import views now from views views dot 
index was our and name is equal to home page so let's just check whether it is working or not and good enough we are able to get the values here now our actual objective is to get the html page so for html page we have to understand few things and the first concept is called templates in our system in django we have to create a folder or you can name any anything here that's not a problem but the most important part is coming into the settings and setting the template description so first i would just add the my application for the future purpose and so whatever app you would create inside the django project you have to always add it in here that's called installed apps and for the templates you have to come here and you have to define the folder which we have just created right so this folder which we have created here is should be in the same root folder of the our parent app so like manage.py it should be in the same folder now in here templates or you can define it anyway for me i am just doing it this way os dot so i am just adding that path to my template and join at the top of this page we have a base tile which actually gets us the root path for this particular project so it gets us the project path we can just check it by printing as well so for now base tire comma what we want to have is templates so our folder name should be okay it's not so template now if i just have to confirm if i check base tire and if i just simply pass this command as well we can confirm our understanding so i'm saving it and once the system would be loaded as you can see here it is able to give me the path so this is what we did by defining the template now once we have defined the template we have to come here we have to be in the folder and create some web page so for that i can just simply index.html and in this html page i can just simply define now once we have created this sample html page let's just reload but it won't do anything because we have not configured or we have not written the logic in our views dot views dot py so now from here onwards we don't want to return http response but we want to return a web page so render your request and then our html page that's called index.html it would be able to find in the templates because we have defined it and something which we want to pass it to our web page so let's say context i say a and the value is hello world so our context if i come so if i reload my web page so this is how our templates get established now our objective is to create a form for that i have my code handy here so what i have done is i have created a form a very basic form form and let's see how does it looks like so this is how it looks like so in our data we had this many requirements to predict any of the mileage per gallon cylinder display displacement horse weight acceleration model origin and how i have written it is very simple i have the simple form and the action gives the url which has to be hit and for me right now it's predict mpg so i have to create a function for that so i will come to here in views and i would create a function request and then return for now none the same thing should be available in the urls url predict mpg is my target point then i have to call that particular function views dot predict mpg and name is equal to let's say predict mpg just for our own purpose now save 
Now coming back to index HTML, let's understand what I have written in the form. So it's a very standard same. So CRSRF token is for, for making any post request to the Django system. We need to have a CSRF token first initiated in the form itself. And what it does is, it, so it prevents us from cross-site request forgery attack, which is related to security. So it's a enforced from the Django by default if we are doing any post request to the server that is Django. So that's how we just include it and everything is taken care. The rest is our main business which we have to business logic which we have to implement. So I have my labels which is what we saw. So these are my labels and the input are defined in here. So I'm just giving a default value so that I don't have to write it every time. And the name which we have defined would be given as the query dictionary or the keys of the query dictionary to the server or the Django. So this name would be our keys and then what type of the text and all are same as usual in the HTML. So I have created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven such input text making variable cylinder well, displacement well, horsepower, weight, acceleration, mod, model and the original origin. So these are the data requirements. Now I have the submit and this submit button would make the call predict MPG. So as simple as that, there is, there is nothing extra here. So I define my URL, I have my views and that view would come from the index. So the starting point is the index. So I, I just have my values. I will just reload and I submit. Now I get the error. There is no HTTP response because we have not defined such response for that. So views. Now I can render the same value here itself. Context. So we are just doing this to understand how it all works. Let's say this time hello new world so what we have to do now is in index.html so let's observe the differences what happens after the button click action in our application so i i'm in my home page which is coming through this view index and then we are rendering the index dot html with the context hello world now i will come to my index page and let's print our context which we are sending here and the value which we are sending is has to be passed in double bracket and whatever variable we have sent through the context can be accessed here so our first variable which we have passed here is a so i can just simply say a and let's observe what happens and now you can see I got my hello world now once I have defined it in my context for the predict mpg so when the button action would be called so this particular button when I will click it it will come to the predict mpg but we are still rendering the index.html page and our context value is changed so we will we will see how the value gets changed in the UI so I, I am in the hello world. So we are in the index. Now I, I am doing going to do the action submit. And as you can see now, my values got changed. So that's how we learn how to send a dynamic data to the UI in the same HTML page. So far we have done this. Now our next action is actually to take the data in and predict the MPG. So I'm I have to now get all the values which we are sending through the particular input values or input text. So our request, if I have to show it, request print, if I print it, let's understand what happens. So this is my console. I come here. As you can see, our request is a post method. So now I can access it using a post method if request dot 
method dot method is equal equal to post I would just say print something just to confirm our understanding I reload again and you can see so the method was post which we saw here as well now let's edit it what extra so now I have to get the all the values through the post method so that has a query deck so how to confirm it we can instead of typing hello world we can type request dot post dot dict if I convert or check the data type now I would just reload just refresh again I will do a submit and I can see my values here now so it's inside a dictionary and it has all the values and then my each element of the input is a key and I can access the values through this particular post method now what I have to write is so if my request dot method is equal equal to post we have to simply say request dot post as it's a dict now what I can do is simple get a particular value which I want similarly I can access all the variables so my value came perfect now I have to just simply do it for all So I got my all the values now once I have my values I have to load my model as well so for that I can just simply for that particular purpose I have to get my model first and we created our model in here so this is my freshly trained model in the web app I can just simply create models and I save my file here from SQLM. so we got our model now in our model we have to score it to score it we have to understand how to score a dictionary instead of a to score to score a dictionary data and our model is expecting a data frame so we have to create a data frame for that so for that particular purpose I have a dummy example on how, how it would actually work so if I pass a dictionary I have to prepare a database so just to show it how the data should look like so it, we will create the data in this format and simply use it to score it so once if I score it I will get the predictions directly now I can just simply get it here so my test data for that I have to import the pandas I will load my data and then I have to score it to score I would use this particular command reload model I would say score well is equal to this and now we can actually pass not something random but our actual value now this is the score we will be sending it to the end user for that particular purpose let's have a actual dummy data or actual sample data which we want to score so this is our actual data let's put it in our form so instead of dummy data we have to fill a actual value and we are good now this is my dummy data which is the kind of actual data we have placed our model in our predict mpg and we are rendering the value and now we have to just simply check whether it is working or not so I come to my model and I so this is my default value here and I am going to score so when I hit the button which is perfectly good now it says model here is not in index 
so what we have to check is what we have made a mistake so in here I have created model well and our model takes or this particular model takes model year as a space and in my UI I am passing model well so if I come here now model year is a underscore we have to make it without underscore model year is equal to temp model year and then we will just delete the temp to model year I hope this works now submit and we got same error model year not in index okay I got it my mistake I have to pass temp2 here temp2 and now we should be able to do it and good enough we are able to do now we have to print that value as well so what I am going to do is in the index.html once we got the information I would want to print it the mpg score is now I have passed the variable as a name score well so I can just now print it now one thing has to be kept in mind my index.html is being used for my default page as well and for my score page as well and because of that now I would see the mpg score in my index also or in my default page as well and once I do the submit I will get the score here so before that that variable was not there hence it was empty now the value is is there it would be able to print it so so this is a quick which we have already achieved now now we have to understand few things what if I don't want to show any of this information in my default web page but I still want to use the same web page so what I can do is in Django we have a if else statement that comes from the Jinja tags to explore the Jinja we have to understand a small way of defining the variables in Django templates so how to do it is very simple we have the start and end of the code so this signifies the start the curly bracket and the percentage mark and the percentage mark and the curly bracket defines the end of that particular so now we have a start quote and end quote here if I have to write if else I have to just simply say if my variable name and now without using any curly brackets so if I have to define anything individually then I have to use the variable inside the double curly brackets if I am using the quotes already then I don't need to define it now what I am going to check is if a score well exists then do this statement else nothing I can just simply close the if statement to close the if statement I have to just simply say and if and we are good enough let's check what we have written I got my default page now without the text if you see the text is not there anymore I do a submit and I see my text this simple it's really this simple once you get to hold or know about this it's all done there's, there's nothing more to learn in the if else what maximum you can have is you can just simply have another quotes start and end and then you can see say elif good enough or you can also have else but right now we would come to that usage later but this is how usually the fls statement is being defined in django templates so i will remove this for now uh, let's move to the next part 
so far we are we are able to create a form we are able to take the value as a post request and then we are able to selectively print something using if else statement based on one of the context variable now our next part is to learn how to beautify the html page to edit this particular page i have my code already handy with me and i am just using it here and now you can see this is a very standard html page which has some style sheets which has some jquerys and and some headers some footer so this is this is where some footer belongs then we have some headers and i have just replace the one value which i have to bring back so predict mpg is correct and now here i have to just get the if else statement again so here i have my html page so now let's run it and see what happens and i load it i can see the text but i do not see anything in a style format meaning i am not able to find any style or the css not implemented or they are not working so the reason is we have to host those set particular files in our django application or in other words we call it serve the css files or the static files before doing that we have to do some modification in our settings.py and also it's a very specific to the django and based on your preferences so in your setting file what you have to do is there is already a static url defined in the as a default setting for as a default static url variable and to host all this variable first we have to have the css files so for that i have my css files already which is in this one this all would be available to you in my github link for this particular application now the first important thing is your css files are very specific to the applications so first the css files or any of the static files should belong to a particular app and then later on django would bring it forward for serving so we don't need to worry about it so very first step is go inside your app and paste your static files whatever you are you want to have inside the name folder name static once you have the folders so this all are organized here and we will just now serve this files to serve this files we have to come to the static Uh, settings page and define a new variable that's called static root and this variable would have our so this is the only change we need to do in the settings page now the second important thing which has to be done is just one more time in the app place a static folder have your files inside the second part is once you have placed it inside the app again not in outside of the system or the root directory create a blank folder called static and in the settings you have to just simply define static root then come to your console this is my command prompt django and i close the command and now i have to run django manage.py and simply collect static see collect static and enter so it says this many files have been copied and where it has been copied in the empty folder which we just gave so admin is our default app which comes with the django so don't worry about the admin file but this css files which we place inside the uh, app are now outside and they are now ready to be served from the django app so i will run my server again and in the html file i have to do a small changes now to load a html or css file in the system or in the template or the html page we have to use a particular command and that's called 
within our curly brackets and our start and end quote I would say load static once I have said load static now it is available as a variable to my Django template within my Django template and here onwards I have to edit very small pieces of the href for each style sheet and the javascript files to define it I'll just make a space use up curly brackets and start and end of the code call your variable static and then your file name with a space and this all would be inside a double quotes and this would be in single quotes then. as you can see now this is how we have to define the style sheets now using our static variable and the rest would get merged to the particular static variable now all the others has to be done with the same approach so I would come here and I will replace all similarly with all the javascript files which are at the end so I have to replace all the files and done now let's try to reload it after starting the server so our server is started reload and now you can observe our style sheets are available in our system submit which is good origin unknown categorical future represent during transform which is fine which is one let's say yeah good enough now this all messages would come to you to un to see if something is found or not so css tool plate style.css is not found which is fine which we are not also using it so not a problem which is this one remove it so we are good for now now we have to step ahead with our next learning and that would be to send a default values now if I want to have a default value through the system itself or let's say I enter some relevant values and I submitted the score for which I am getting should be relevant to that particular value so now right now what what's happening is so this is how I am sending the value now once I do a submit my values get reset again because the way we have defined in our index.html and that is absolute values in the value column now here I want to send some value through the backend which is through our context now I will try to get the new values at that particular point for that particular pur purpose I have the values already handy to me in here in the index now instead of using this default context we don't want to use it we want to send some actual values so I would define my context is equal to my temp values would be temp variable and now this context has now temp variable now I will come to my index and let's understand how the temp variable come into the picture if I reload as you can see all the dictionary values are available to me for use now what I have to do is I will come to the system as we have already seen now I want to access a particular key value and I would place it here so how I can do is a simple and dot and I will replace this with and here my names so to access a dictionary based on key just pass on the variable and use dot cylinder or the key name and you would be able to get the values so let's just check how it is working from the backend now I will reload and as you can see now 8307 I am able to get the values I will just quickly change it all for all the variables and we are done we got it submit and to get the values even after 
submitting the values or getting the prediction like we are losing it right now we have to pass it in our context of the second function that is predict mpg and for that particular purpose i would just pass temp and the value to it and now let's check whether it is working or not i submit and good enough now we are able to retain the values in the ui i will just remove the this variable from the top which is this one good submit and we are good now now the second part of this particular use case is to now send the particular information to the database and that is connecting to the mongodb so for that in my system mongodb is already running which is this one now we have to add two more urls to our application and i will come here i have to add first is view database which would just give me the number of rows i have in my data now and for that i have to come to views and define the new function that say view database request and we will do something later and the other function would be update database request and we will do something to in the urls again view database dot database name is equal to view database then similarly the second function would be update database perfect now we are our url is ready now the second important thing which we have to do is in the index page we have to have a form which works only when we have scored it and the second is we need to have a web page which shows the number of records in the database for that we have to connect so for that we have to have something for this so this is the url which i have and i have the home url as well so let's see how this home url and view database url would work just come here and now home url how it would work is html in your html tag where we have the home where is the home which is this one so home just say href as a forward slash and it would work as a home and for the view database simple view database a url which we have added view database which is perfect and it will directly work for it now we have to add one file that would be um, view db dot html and here we want to show the number of rows for that we have to connect to the database that is our mongodb database i have already created a notebook which would be available and uh, this has all the queries required and these are the supporting libraries which i want to get initiated the mongodb so from mongodb then i need to connect with my database so i connect with my database then i have to connect to my database that is this so i have created a database called mpg database if you want to have a little information more about how i have done the mongodb setup i have another video which would just i would just point out so that you can follow it and then i think we are good enough for this now so this has the information of my database and then the table and to get the number of rows i have to just simply do collection db dot find dot count this would give me the counts count of row is equal to this i would just render the values context is equal to value this value and now instead of index.html i have to pass view db.html let's see how it works i come to view db good enough in the view db i have to pass count of row which is here 
the number of records in dbr and i just reload and i get to see my numbers this is good enough but now let's also implement the another feature which we wanted and that was after i submit if the value is fine for the user he will send another information or a button or he will click a button which sends all this data to the backend or to the system now for that particular purpose we have to change this particular form based on the given information so how would i do that so the first connection which i get the idea is the way we did the hide and show of this particular statement in our index.html so if i come here in here we have used if score well is available then we would either hide it or show it now can i do the same thing with all the forms also so right now this particular form is doing the predict mpg call now i want to do another call with some form which will call update database can i use the same form because i want to the same values and send it to some other action using if else and the answer is yes so what exactly i have to do is i have to check if my variable exist if yes i have to select different action in the form so if score well exist then we don't want the predict we want action update database which is good i'll remove this extra form if then i have to have else else i need to have this particular url and then end and if then rest would follow now again if score well then we don't want oh we still want this particular action to happen no matter what so we are good enough of not having this particular values but right now what we want to send to the backend is the complete information which also has the mpg right now we only have inputs which has all the independent variables we also want to send the dependent variable so for that we certainly need the if score well so if score well exist we want this input and our variable as a value to it and type would be hidden so that it does not come in the view and else nothing and then we just simply would end the so if score well would be found we would call the update database if not found we will call the predict mpg similarly if score well would be there we would want to send that value as a input if not we we just don't have that variable with our system and again we want to show or hide the values i would just reload so right now if i do submit mpg score is 16.9 and it says submit here which i don't want i would want to have in a different way else else this statement submit and i would also want the user a message which says h3 if the response is good do you want to save it in db shall we check again submit if response is good do you want to save it in db and submit and i would have the error which is perfect now let's just rearrange the statement which is this particular one we want it at the top just check it again if score well submit the score is 16.9 if the response is good do you want to save it in db and submit and we get to see update database perfect now i have to come to views and then edit update database for this particular purpose i have to collect all the values i will collect all the values and then i also need to collect 
this has to be modeled here as we are sending it to database another value which is mpg and let's just confirm whether i have defined it or not hidden origin well and the value would be mpg well request dot post dot get mpg well so now this temp has to pass through this way uh -huh. not that way we have to just send it to insert our temp value is completed i have to say collection dot insert and temp and we are good what i have to do is simply let's just render the another page which we have and let's just count the data one more time so i insert the data first and then i count and then count is already given and we are good to go let's just do it again in the ui my server come here and i score once i score i submit it to system and then i get my ui now so far we learned about how to connect with the database how to send the data how to score a model i mean how to use a model in django application now there is a very important function and a feature and that's templates so when we were doing all this exercise you would have wondered now i have another web page i have to do all these things again like beautification of it like header and footer are the basic thing which we use everywhere right so it has to be constant so for that particular purpose we would use the templates in another way now so let's see how jinja or django templates help us on maintaining this templates where we can use same piece of html codes again and again in a blocks so let's discover it for that we have to restructure our web page so right now we have a index.html page and then we have a viewdb.html page and for both we want the same header and footer and we just want to change the contents in the body part for this particular purpose i would create a empty html template and copy paste and let me just name it header page good now in this header page i would open it and i would remove all the contents from the container which is from here to the end so inside the container till this point now this can become my template which i would just reproduce or reuse every for every other page and in here i have to just simply call a another jinja function or functionality which says open and end of the blocks and simply say block and then say content then close this particular block that's called end block so this is my content now so assume this as my container and whatever would be filled inside this containers would have would just populate on every other web page so now this is my main page and let's say of the index page i would just want to have my bare information which is from here inside the container whatever i have up to here this all is gone so this are the piece which i would just want to fit inside my header dot header page dot html now what happens is the block which we have defined here would be accessible in index page by just calling a one particular line and very important this particular line should always be in the first line of the next page wherever we want to use that particular block say extent and the page name header page dot html and we are good to go i have to again say block content and at the end shall we try it now so if i have to be in my first page 
I reload again you can see all the things are available and now we are using this as a template and our index contains only whatever is required and our header page becomes the block I mean a structure which has a block and things can be fit there now the same thing can be added in my view DBA as well I would just paste it save it and now enter and if I go to database as you can see my header and footers are available to me in here as well and I don't need to replicate or redo the same code again and again for any of the exercise this simple I really like the Django with this all features of it hopefully they all are available in every other tool as well but for me this was good enough uh, so I'm just going to do some experiments now submit I get to see my data now I want to submit this to my database let's submit it and now there are total 99 rows in my data I go back to home let's change some values to 20 model year to 90 and submit and I got some other values submit I got my 100 rows so just to confirm Throughout this exercise, we got to learn a very simple demo of training a data, a model, saving a model, getting it ready for hosting it in the server or Django server or application. Then we learned how to create a form, how to get the values from the form. We also got how to send a response to the server. Then we also learned how to send the data to the database, simply deploy the server HTML in Django serving CSS files perfectly. We learned it using collect static, database connection, template tags, which we learned using Jinja, template tags for controlling HTML files, which we learned by creating a header page and then using the block, serving a model as a web server forms in Django. So I, I hope I was able to convey whatever I wanted through this particular video. And I hope you like the idea of how to serve a model in a web server in Django. That's all for this particular video. If you like my videos, the content of this channel, please consider subscribing to it and have a great day. Thanks for your time.